around the 3rd millennium BC, next to the Ural Mountains, which separates Europe and Asia, lived the people of the Finnugi tribes, where in the marshes of the Ob River they survived by fishing and hunting. As the temperature changed for the warmer, so did the climate belt. The area that was once dominated by forests and tundra slowly became the great steppes of Asia. This was how the Finno nation started their great journey to the west, where they found a new home in the forests of the Scandinavian peninsula. But it was also the time when the Samoyed people ventured to the northeast to remain in the tundra, their usual habitat. The Ugric people stayed in place, however, and their numbers multiplied between the banks of Ypres and Tobol rivers. They learned the secrets of metallurgy at a naval husbandry by their neighbors, the nomadic people of the Siberian steppe. As time progressed, the southern Ugri people, who were in a closer bond with these nomadic tribes and their northern brothers, started to adapt the way of the horsemen, which led to the separation of the tribes around 1200 BC. The northern folks moved back to the region of the Ob River and their hunter-gathering lifestyle, their descendants, their cantons and Nainsheiks, are to this very day the closest language relatives of the Hungarians. When the southern Ugri tribes began their nomadic journey, marked the birth of the Hungarian nation. Although most of the languages use some kind of variation of the word Ugri for them, like Ungarus or Ungar, which the Frankish historiography supplemented with Silent Age, and was born was brought to the Anglo-Saxon languages by the Normans, hence the name Hungarian. The Hungarians did not see much of a difference in this name change, since the Hanit ancestry was a common origination myth with nations with nomadic past, which was no different in their case. They have used a different name for themselves, which was and still is the Magyar. It comes from the finno ugric language, the word Magy can also be found in the Manshik self-naming, with the meaning of tell or speak, while the R is an ancient finno ugric word with the meaning of person. So the phrase roughly means a speaking man, which may be a reference to a group of people who use the same language, which only they can understand. Since they adopted nomadism, it meant that Hungarians did not have any permanent residence. Their most important activity was animal husbandry, which mostly included herding sheep on open plains or cattle in places where they found lush pastures. While they used carts and chariots for warfare, the importance of horses and in turn the importance of cavalry became much more prevalent in their culture, so the carts developed back into a means of transportation during the times of migration. These migrations were between two places, a so-called summer and winter homes. The latter were mainly located near the mouths of rivers, shielded by winds, while in the summer they moved north, where their pastures were safe from the scorching sun. They also engaged in pasha farming, which according to linguistic studies they learned from the Turkic people. At their winter homes they would sow grains just before they packed up towards the south, which they would harvest when they arrived back at the end of the summer. They only constructed buildings at the winter homes, which were pit houses and some pens to protect the herd. Since during the summer they were always on the move, they used tents, which they reinforced with felt and makeshift shelters from the carts. This change in lifestyle not only affected their day-by-day -day living, but it echoed through their society. To oversee an increasingly growing herd, they lived in big families whose members were bound by blood. Since this family's wealth wasn't in shadow, houses or soil, but in their very livestock they maintained, their most important task was to protect it. They were always combat ready. Old men learned how to use a bow from a very young age, since it was their preferred weapon. But combat was no exclusive to them. The women also took part in the fights. These families made up the clans, which members were also relatives and were from a common ancestor. On the level above were the tribes and the tribal alliances, but these were much more fragile, since they were led by the most influential elder of a clan, and the balance of power shifted frequently. They lived almost a millennium this way, in the embrace of the Ural Mountains, on the plains 
of Western Siberia up until the 6th century AD and they were forced to migrate away from their homelands. The changing climate played a huge role in the lives of the nomadic people, often resulting in war. Only a 30% loss in rainfall could have killed up to 80% of the livestock. These climate changes were the most devastating in the inner Asia regions. Most people had to move towards the greener pastures of Eastern Europe. They chased away the locals towards the west, who in turn chased other people away from their homelands and so on and so forth, resulting in large-scale movements in the steppes, like how the Huns stimulated the Great Migration. It is likely that a similar event exiled the Hungarian ancestors from their homelands around the year 550. This is reinforced by archaeological finds from the time period. The artifacts, which were typical for the Hungarian people from this time, are not from the steppes of Asia, but from the area west from the Ural. In the valleys of River Kama, a new kind of ethnic group appears, very new kinds of rituals. They erect in mounds upon their dead and send them to the afterlife in clothes, armed, and with bones of horses, or even whole animals in some cases all pointing towards a nomadic Eurasian ethnicity. Of course, it would be hard to prove this correspondence with the Hungarians just with the archaeological finds alone. However, a monk who lived seven centuries later could confirm the connection. In the 1220s, a group of monks called the Dominic Order engaged in religious conversion in the Hungarian kingdom. They discovered a faction of Hungarians in the old chronicles who get separated from the main group during their journey. A monk named Otto took on the task to find these long-lost relatives of the nation, whom he found in the roots of the Caucasian mountains. Three years later, another monk called Julianus set out to repeat Otto's journey by the order of the future King Bela IV. He started his travel from Buddha and headed towards Constantinople, where he took sails upon the Black Sea. When he reached the shores of the Caucasians, he did not find the Hungarians he was looking for, but he got a lead towards Volga, Bulgaria, where he might still find their trail. He joined the caravan of a merchant, and with them he traveled through the plains until he reached his destination. In a big city, he met a woman speaking Hungarian, and she promised to take him to her people, whom lived by two days of travel. He finally found them, by the big Athi river. Upon seeing him, they understood that he is Christian and Hungarian, and they rejoiced because of his arrival. They led him through their houses and villages, and they asked about their Christian brothers, their kings and kingdom with great interest. Everything he said about faith or other matters, they listened attentively. Since their language is entirely Hungarian, they understood him, and he understood them pagans whom are unaware of God. From the tales of the old they know that they are from the Hungarians, but they have no idea where they might live now. After he found his relatives, he started his journey back to home on a shorter route in the summer of 1236. From the Bulgarians he headed west across the lands of the Mordwings, through the Vladimir Susdalian Rus to the Polish Kingdom, where in the passes the northern Carpathians, he found himself home. Julianus tried to start again his expedition on the route whence he came back in the spring of the next year. However, along the way he met all kinds of refugees. They warned him about the conquest of the Golden Horde. The lands Julianus sought were no more. He gave up on his second expedition, but the land where he found the Hungarians he called Magna Hungaria in a great or in this case, Old Hungary, which was adopted by the later ages. So there they lived, the Hungarian tribes for the next hundreds of years, up until the middle of the 8th century, when the Abbasid Caliphate just started to spread its wings. Their militaristic expansion not only targeted the Byzantine Empire and Middle Asia, but also the Khazar Khaganate, the major political power next to the Caucasian mountains. Under the command of Caliphate Marwan II, they waged war with the Khazars from the 720s, and after a decisive blow in 737, they managed to break through the mountains. To avoid the devastation of the Arabian armies, many ethnic groups left their old homelands, 
This is how the Volgan Bulgarians found their new home in the valleys of Kama and Volga, where Julianus met them. It is unknown what kind of relationship these newcomers had with the Hungarians, but it is likely that after an armed conflict they gained control of the area. In another theory, it was the war mongering Pechungs who lived by the Ural River were the ones who chased them away. One thing is certain, around 750, the Hungarians were split into two. The smaller groups stayed behind and were integrated into the Bulgarian society, while most of them set out to find a new home for their people. They ventured forth, crossing the Volga, and then further west, where they finally settled down in the area surrounding the Down River, just in the outskirts of the Khazar Haganet. They called this land Levedia after their leader, Levedi, and became the next stop of their thousands of years of journey towards the Catholic and Basin.